Hello, this is Mr. McGovern. We are going to look at satellite motion in this video, and this is the seventh video in the circular motion series of Level 3 NCA Physics. So we'll talk about how it works, and we'll go into a force diagram for satellites. So a misconception is that satellites just sit stationary in space. They don't. Um, they must follow an orbit, and an orbit is a path around the Earth, or could be a path around the moon or a path around the sun. That's what an orbit is. So satellites don't just sit up there, they, they need to follow this path. The first person to sort of come up with this idea of satellite motion in an orbit was Isaac Newton, and this is his actual original diagram. And so what he imagined was um, a an Earth <coughs> or, or a planet, and atop this planet was a very, very high mountain. And on top of the mountain was a cannon. And this whole thing is called Newton's cannon. So the cannon is um, so high on this mountain that it's up above the atmosphere, it's outside the atmosphere. Because it's upside, outside the atmosphere, when it fires the cannonball, um, there's no air, so there's no friction. So we can ignore friction in this situation. Now, <clears throat> the cannon fires the cannonball, um, and the smallest... Um, little line there, I think it's labelled D, from the mountain, is the cannonball falling back to Earth. If you increase the amount of gunpowder in there, Newton thought, well, you're going to get the one that's labelled E. It's going to go a bit further as it falls back to Earth. If you increase the gunpowder again, and we can get the cannonball firing even faster, it'll follow the path labelled F, where it will curve, uh, it'll be pulled back to Earth by the gravity, but as it's pulled back to Earth, it's going fast enough that um, it gets further and further around the Earth. It curves with the Earth's curvature as well. And so you keep doing this and you keep increasing the gunpowder um, and the cannonball makes it further and further around the Earth before it falls back onto the ground. Now, if you just keep going with this thought experiment, there's a point where you have a large enough velocity that the cannon... Um, it's falling to the Earth, it's being pulled by gravity to be curved around, but the velocity is high enough that its motion, its, its um, path that it takes, follows the, the curvature of the Earth. Okay? So the Earth's gravity is pulling it um, and trying to pull it around towards it, but its velocity is fast enough that it can keep going around. And there we have um, an orbit. This is what an orbit is. It's something with enough velocity that the Earth's gravity pulls it back towards it, but it's just constantly falling around the Earth. And this is what our satellites are. So there's only one force on our satellites when they're up there, and that's the force of gravity from the Earth. Now, it had to have velocity. You can't just put a satellite up there and hope it works. Um, the rockets that send them up there have to go up to the right height above the Earth, but most importantly, they have to go um, tangentially very, very fast to get enough speed so that this thing will keep falling towards the Earth. So once it's got that speed, the rocket just drops off, don't need the rocket anymore, and it doesn't have any source of thrust once it's up there. It just keeps falling and falling around the Earth, and it's not going to slow down because it's above the atmosphere, um, there's no friction on it. So once the orbit's achieved, um, this force of gravity keeps it moving in circular motion. And we're going to tie force of gravity to circular motion in one of the next uh, couple of videos. So we'll see you back for the, uh, the next one.